If you're buying Cleveland rental properties, you need to be here watching Holton Wise TV because I cut it all down for you. You guys send me deals, I break them down. I got a couple of clients in Cali, right? They sent me three deals. One, terrible. The other one, could have went good, could have went bad. The price they had it under contract. I told them they got to drop that by like 40 grand. This is the third one they've got under contract, right? So my track record here, I saved them like 60 G's buying a dud. Told them they got to sway their offer 30, 40 G's on the other one. And this one, well, this one, fellas, you guys just made 25 grand the moment you put this thing under contract. I'm going to tell you why. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. The show where I help investors maximize their gains, minimize their losses, live their real estate dreams. Man, I got two clients, Walter and his business partner, California investors. You dudes, you're smart. You're smart people, right? You put three investment properties under contract, three multifamily properties, all contingent on inspection and all contingent on your boy James Wise doing an analysis for you, right? Make sure you do the good deals. Make sure you pass on the bad deals. And then after the fact, if you want full service property management, maintenance, construction, I got it. If you guys need property insurance, you know we do that too right there. We will insure this property. We will insure the other two if you bought them. Although if you paid attention to my video, you sure as shit shouldn't buy the first one. The second one, sure, you should buy it. But you got to get the seller to come down 30, 40 grand. This one, though. Holy fuck! You two hit the fucking mother load on this one, boys. You motherfuckers just hit a fucking boom! Let's do that again! Boom! You guys fucking slammed this so bitch out the park! Woo! I am so jacked on this deal. And I'm so jacked at how it came about, right? This is this is great. Now, f fellas, if you notice. The two videos I just sent you, right? The screen looks totally different, right? That was directly from the MLS. The MLS we utilize here in Northeast Ohio. This, this ain't on the MLS, boys. This is Redfin. This is why you guys fucking crushed it, man. This fucking property, okay? What this is. The address, right? 1470 West 110th, Cleveland 44102. You dudes put this thing under contract at $65,000. You got to buy it, boys. You got to buy it at 65K. You want to know why? Because you just made 25 grand. Because I would sell this thing in Cleveland for 90 grand at least, like that, on the Investment Properties for Sale show. Why the fuck did you guys get away with stealing this son bitch? It all comes down to the MLS. This ain't on the MLS, folks. I don't know what happened, but the seller, for whatever reason, chose to hire this particular real estate person who's not a member of the MLS uh, up here in Northeast Ohio. This is listed on a different MLS, an MLS that's not the one that the majority of folks are utilizing, right? Because I was trying to figure this out, right? You guys sent me your email. You sent me uh, each property with a big old paragraph. Uh, uh, of what you got going on. So I punched it in, did all my notes for the first one. Then I did your video. And I said, hey, dudes, don't buy this motherfucker. Did it for the second one. Same thing. And I said, hey, dudes, buy this motherfucker, but only if you can get the seller to come off 30, 40K. And then this one, type it in the MLS. It's not coming up. I'm like, God damn it, man. Maybe these guys got the... The address wrong, right? Maybe they fuck something up, right? So I'm searching properties, looking to find some variation of the address. Maybe there's a one or two numbers got transposed. It happens. Thinking you guys made a mistake. Can't fucking find it. So I'm like, what the fuck? Maybe it's off market. But then I'm reading your notes. You say you talked to the agent. You say it was listed. I'm confused. I Google it. Find the Redfin thing. I find the MLS number. I'm like, oh, I'm in the money now. I found the MLS number, right? It's right here, folks. Found this. Found this. Go into my MLS Punch this bad boy in. Still doesn't pop up. That's when it dawned on me. I figured it all out. 
part of a different MLS, right? They're part of this MLS up here. That ain't the one we're using up in the Cleveland area, so ain't nobody seeing this, dude. So you guys have swooped in and stole this property. And you just made fucking 25 grand. Now, you guys talk to me. You guys got some ideas, and I don't want you to do any of them, honestly. You guys don't need to do that, right? What you got right now, uh, well, let me go over market rent, right? This is why this property is worth at least 90, right? Uh, the market rents is going to be 750, 750, 1500, 18,000, right? After fixed and variable expense estimates, you're looking at around 9,269 in profit for the year, right? That's market. Now, if it was that, if you had that, I'd sell the property for 100, maybe 105. That's why I don't like your plan because you guys are talking about removing the existing tenants, fixing it up, and burning it out. Dude, you don't need to burn it out because, again, like, that's what you'd get. You get 750, 750, okay? You, you would get that. And uh, that'd be like the max, right? If you did the renovation, did all that jazz, and it'd be worth like 105 max. But, dudes, you don't need to do that, right? You don't need to really do that. This bad boy is worth at least 90,000 right now, if not probably 100,000 anyway, because you get a lot of people. You get a lot of people out there that are buying these properties, right, uh, in similar condition to what you guys have. You got two tenants in there, right? One's paying five fifty, and the other's paying six and a quarter, right? And it's a little dated inside, but there's really no, like, huge market, right? There's, like, no real big huge market for, uh, like, people kicking these tenants out, going in and, and completely making everything pure turnkey, right? Like, you don't have to do that, right? Like, you say you got a roof, okay? You don't need to kick all the tenants out and like, oh, we got this roof. The roof's 15 years old. Dude, you don't replace a roof that's 15 years old. The roof has 15 more years of life expectancy. You don't go in and be like, oh, we got two old furnaces. Let's replace them. No, they still work. You operate them till they no longer work, bros, right? Furnaces last about 30 years. If you got a 26-year-old furnace, you probably got at least four years of life into it before you even need to think about doing that, right? And as far as your tenants go, you would never, ever, ever want to kick out two tenants. Yeah, they're not paying 750 bros, but they're paying close, right? You don't kick them out because then you got to go in and refresh the units. You got to drop 10, 15, 20K. You don't need to do that, right? Because if you wanted to sell it, most I'm selling it for is like 105, right? But to get two new tenants in there and sell it at 105, it needs to be totally fresh. You gotta probably put at least 10 grand into each unit to get me that, right? You don't need to do that, dude. It's worth 90 on my show today, right? If you wanna hold it for like six months to, to push yourself further out from your purchase price, we could probably get the bad boy to appraise it about 100, right? What I think you should do, honestly, you buy it at 65, you get your tenants, to renew a lease with you at the same rent. Then you slowly work them up. 25, 50 bucks, right? Slowly. Your goal should be to get them as close to 750 a unit as humanly possible without creating a turnover. This is multifamily investing in the Cleveland market, fellas. You're going to get enough turnovers in your life. Trust me, you're going to get more turnovers than you probably really want. And turnovers are what kill us, right? So if you can get these guys up to 750 a pop or close to 750 a pop without a turnover, you're saving 20 Gs. That's what you want to do, right? Because, again, just like a decently operational property with mechanicals in, in varying ages, that's what's really selling out here. There's really no need or reason to, like, over-renovate the property and never, ever, ever create an artificial turnover to do so. So what I would do, and I talked about this in one of your other videos, right? I would hold it for a little while, maybe maybe six months, maybe a year, okay? And I would try to get the tenants' rents up at that time, right? And then, then I would go for my appraisal without having done really anything. And I believe it'll probably appraise at 100K, right? You want to push it out kind of far from your purchase price because when you go to sell a property, okay, you go to sell a property, when the appraisers are going to go in and appraise it, they have an arm's length contract. They have this contract and they see that a buyer and a seller came together and they believe the value is X, Right? They're going to base their appraisal heavily off of that. That's going to be in their brain, right? Appraisers are people. People can be swayed. I mean, as a matter of fact, appraisers usually contact me asking me questions, right? Because I'm, you know, number one dude out here selling this type of stuff. I sold over $200 million worth of properties like this. I know what I'm doing. 
Like shit, if the person that hired the realtor that's not even part of the MLS would have fucking found out about Homelines TV, I would have put $25,000 in that motherfucker's pocket that he ain't going to get now because you motherfuckers stole it. But that's great. I'm proud of you guys because you should because that's business. He represented himself with an agent who doesn't understand what they're doing. His mistake, you two put your money where it needs to be, hiring the motherfucking expert, and now you know you're about to make 25 grand on this and that first deal. You know that would have been a loss, so I saved you money there, right? Aces in their places, folks. Hire the experts and pay them, pay them well. This schmuck probably found the realtor to do the job cheaper than anybody, and he's fucking paying the price whether he knows it or not. So back to what I was saying, though, right? You do these appraisals, and if there's a purchase a purchase agreement, right? The appraiser is going to have that weighing on their mind. And it's very likely that if there's similar comps to it, it's going to come in exactly at that number, right? Because that's that's the truest, truest way to determine the value of something, what someone's willing to pay, right? What someone's willing to pay in an arm's length transaction. What we have over here is not really an arm's length transaction because they're, they're marketing it in the wrong MLS, right? But if you guys pick it up at 65 and then we immediately take it to the bank to refi, hoping to get 100, I don't think that's going to happen because they're just going to look at your purchase price, and that's going to weigh heavily on that appraiser, right? So I would probably hold it six months to a year, right? Because then I think we'll have a good shot at getting that uh, $100,000 appraisal, especially if you're able to bring those rents up and perhaps if maybe you replaced a couple things, right? So, like, I'm not saying you have to go in and renovate it, but, hey, maybe the roof was older. I'm not 100% sure where we're at with the roof on this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But, say, in that holding period of a year, you slapped a new roof on that bad boy. Then when your appraiser comes out, the last purchased uh, price, you know, that's that's long gone. That's a while ago. He's looking at it. He's doing his inspection. sees a brand-new roof. He's probably going to be able to get a $100,000 appraisal. I, I think that's what you'll do. But, in all honesty, like I said, we could sell this son of a bitch tomorrow for 90k even with the low rents easily get it up to like 100 if we start raising those rents and then again if you renovated it you're really only pushing your value folks are really only paying it paying like 105 that probably really be the max because then you start to be over improved for the neighborhood so uh fellas putting a bow on this right starting to ramble a little bit i just want you guys to know you made a killing buying it you made all your money don't try to spend any more money. You made all your money. Collect rent from those tenants. Try to increase their rents. Push out uh, your cash out refinance as long as you possibly can in an effort to get the highest possible appraisal. Great job. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.